We're in downtown Clearwater, Florida, in the very heart of what the Scientology organization considers their spiritual headquarters. 25 years ago, Scientology came to Clearwater under the pseudonym United Churches. Al Ron Hubbard set into motion a plan called Project Normandy, a covert operation designed for the complete takeover of Clearwater. It said move into Clearwater, find out who your friends are, develop them, uh, find out who your enemies are, destroy them, and infiltrate every uh, organization you can. This is a criminal organization. They don't really care about individuals other than themselves. Scientology's covert operations were run by the Guardian's Office, a branch of Scientology which has since been renamed the Office of Special Affairs. FBI agents had enough evidence uh, on the Scientologists uh, to raid their headquarters in Los Angeles and Hollywood. They took 43,000 documents, uh, many of them uh, were actually stolen from top uh, government agencies in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. They infiltrated government offices and were caught at it. Their entire top leadership uh, was uh, uh, investigated, uh, indicted, tried and convicted and sent to the Polky. They went to jail. Uh, for, for this. For over 20 years, the Clearwater Police Department actively investigated Scientology. For much of that time, the investigation was led by Ray Emmons. We knew that there were predicate crimes. We knew that it was a continuing uh, fraudulent enterprise. Still is to, to this day, as far as I'm concerned, and that's my opinion. But we shopped it around to the federal people, to the state people. And the first question always asked by a prosecutor was, will they harass me? Will they follow me? Two years ago, when Mike Roberto became the new city manager, the investigation stopped abruptly. Roberto forged a new alliance between Scientology and the city. No matter what they had done in the past, uh, the one city, one future took precedence over everything, uh, no matter what. Shortly after the Lisa McPherson Trust opened its doors in January, uh, Bob Minton and I had a meeting with Mike Roberto, the city manager. And we explained to him that we're in town to uh, educate the city of Clearwater about some of the abusive and deceptive practices of Scientology. Mike Roberto's reply to us was that he had just spent two years getting Scientology off the front page of the newspaper. and he was not about to let us get Scientology back on the front page again. And he told us in no uncertain terms that if we caused any trouble for him or for his plans for Clearwater, he was going to get us out of town. Roberto's embracing of Scientology brought about many changes. The police department stopped all active investigation of Scientology and they stopped the training program that taught new recruits what Scientology is and does. Indeed, today, many in the Clearwater Police Department work for Scientology on their days off. They're out here on Watterson Street guarding these white lines. Watterson Street is a small side street shared by both Scientology and the Lisa McPherson Trust. The white lines were burned on Watterson Street a week after the trust opened, and just hours after this lengthy meeting between officials from the city, the Clearwater Police Department, and Scientology's Office of Special Affairs. You can see Mike Roberto in the white shirt walking off to the right. That night, Scientology hired the first pair of off-duty police officers, but the rules changed daily. I just want a clear, firm response from the police department on what the rules are here. In bending over backwards to appease Scientology, Roberto and the police department created new laws on the spot that even its own officers couldn't understand. So I can't go across the line now? No. no? Even worse than the confusion over how to manage the white lines is the byproduct of the creation of this rather unique bus unloading zone. You see, now a large percentage of the Clearwater police force work directly for Scientology, and they're supposed to report to Mike Rinder, the head of the Office of Special Affairs. Again, this is the new name for the Scientology department that once broke into the FBI and the IRS, stole documents, bugged offices, and that to this very day continues to destroy the lives of those people who Scientology perceives to be the enemy. Today, 
Scientology perceives its number one enemy to be the Lisa McPherson Trust. We get calls every day from people who have been harmed by Scientology. Calls from people all over the country. People whose families have been destroyed by Scientology. Uh, women who've lost their husbands, husbands who've lost their wives, parents who've lost their children. And the only place they have to go for help anywhere in the United States is the Lisa McPherson Trust. We of the Trust every day come down Waterson Street and see the Clearwater police officers sitting and laughing and having a great time with OSA agents. The Clearwater police watch as the OSA agents videotape our every move. When we walk in or out of our building, the OSA agent grabs his walkie-talkie and reports on our whereabouts. Scientology PIs follow us everywhere. When a visitor comes to the Lisa McPherson Trust, the police watch as the OSA agent grabs his camera and videotapes their license plate. Those plates are run, and then our visitors are later harassed. The Clearwater Police Department doesn't seem to have a problem with this. We do. The police officers that are sitting down there are being indoctrinated by the Scientology security officers that are sitting with them all day long. Do we not know that this, this cult brainwashes people? Do we not know that these officers every day are being induced and told that the people in the Lisa McPherson Trust are enemies and criminals and we're the good guys to impressionable young officers? And these security officers are uh, telling them what criminals we all are, how dangerous we all are, uh, what terrible religious bigots we are, uh, all kinds of lies about all of us. I want to show you some videotapes shot by myself and others over the course of the past nine months. We believe these videotapes show a clear pattern of bias against the Lisa McPherson Trust on the part of the Clearwater Police Department. This first piece of footage was shot on February 1st of the year 2000. Two German filmmakers had asked me to come along as they shot a documentary about a famous German Scientologist artist who now lives in Clearwater. The day before, the German filmmakers had gone to the police department and asked if it was legal for them to knock on the door and ask for an interview. Wayne Chalor, the police spokesperson, assured them it was. As we headed back to our cars, a man ran out of the house with a hammer. Let me see that camera. How about if I smash that fucker for you? Oh, smash it. You better go. I called the cops. Get the fuck out of here. Is this? Get the fuck out of here. You're on the, the public? Yeah, well, guess what? I'm on the public property, too. You want to you wanna start some shit with me? Hey, hey, hey. How do you like that? The man's name was Richard Barnard, and he claimed to be an electrician doing some work inside the house. Bernard struck the camera twice with a hammer and once with a screwdriver. But even more unsettling than the attack from Bernard was the reaction of the Clearwater Police Department. Police is coming. The first to arrive on the scene was Officer Terrence Kelly. According to recently released documents, Kelly is one of the police officers who works for Scientology on his days off. Can you explain? Yes, these are uh, German documentary filmmakers who are here shooting a, a, a film about Scientology. They've had several documentaries that have been produced already. They're trying to get an interview with the, uh, the person in this house here. Uh, these two gentlemen, and I came along just to videotape to make sure that nothing happened. Good afternoon. Excuse me? <laughs> You've been up on... Uh, yeah, I work for the Lisa McPherson Trust. These fellows came into town and just asked me to come along as backup. Have everybody's ID. Okay. Oh, he attacked us. He wanted to make a report. What's that? He attacked us with a hammer. He made like this with a hammer. Yeah, he did. He, he, uh, he hit the camera. Let me see everybody's ID. Driver's license, ID card. What have you got? There you go. Now, in a moment, I'm going to turn off the video camera after Officer Kelly expresses some concern about it continuing to run. In fact, Officer Kelly was more concerned about my video camera than he was about the hammer attack. After I turned off the camera, Officer Kelly told me it's a felony to record people's voices without their permission. In fact, he threatened to arrest me for the footage you just saw. I told Kelly once again that a man attacked us with a hammer and that I had the whole incident on videotape and I could roll it back and show it to him. Oh, I'll smash it. 
You better go. I called the cops. His response to me was a question. Did you inform that gentleman with the hammer that you were recording audio? If not, that's a felony. Yeah, well, guess what? I'm on the public property, too. You want to you wanna start some shit with me? The next officer on the scene was Officer Holsenbach, who also refused to look at the videotape. Holsenbach is one of the regulars working the white lines on Watterson Street. Scientology pays the officers $21 an hour for a total of $178 per day. Holsenbach's total pay for the first eight months of the year 2000 was $2,848. It wasn't until a sergeant arrived on the scene that anyone took a look at this videotape. The sergeant ordered Officer Kelly to do an investigation, yet Officer Kelly refused to even ask this man for an ID. If he had, he would have discovered that on this day, Richard Bernard gave the police a phony name, a phony birth date, and a phony social security number. It was only later discovered that Richard Bernard had skipped bail on a cocaine trafficking charge. He is now serving a one-year prison sentence in Key West. One of the issues that's come up in Clearwater has to do with peacefully protesting. There are people who want to protest Scientology's abuse and deception by picketing. Scientology reacts very aggressively toward any form of criticism. L. Ron Hubbard's policy was always attack, never defend. In 1967, L. Ron Hubbard wrote that anyone who criticizes Scientology is a criminal. What, what are your crimes against uh, yeah, not only crimes Scientology, involved, but uh, what are your crimes against humanity? I'd like to know. Hubbard declared any enemy an SP or suppressive person. In his fair game policy, Hubbard wrote that an SP may be deprived of property or injured by any means by any Scientologist, may be tricked, sued, or lied to, or destroyed. I don't think before in the history of this country has an organization struck back at critics in a fashion Scientology has. How do you cope with someone trying to uh, see that you get fired or um, ruin your credit or follow you day and night or kill your animals? This is Scientology's enemies list. 47 pages and thousands of names of organizations and individuals that Scientology has labeled its enemies. Right near the top of this list, Scientology certainly has placed the chairman of the board of the Lisa McPherson Trust, Bob Minton. One night in July, the Clearwater police watched as dozens of Scientologists surrounded Bob Minton and tried to provoke an incident. I never saw such outrageous conduct in my life. They call Mr. Minton virtually every name that could possibly be conceived. I got in his face, impeded him, and the police stood there and watched and did nothing. The police have just stood by while these protesters have been assaulted by Scientologists. The police have been absolutely unwilling to do anything to protect the protesters. Scientologists are trying to provoke an incident. Here a shoving match is caught on camera. The Scientologist in the plaid shirt has to be restrained by Scientology security personnel. This footage was shot by Jeff Jacobson, who works for the Lisa McPherson Trust. I came onto the scene shortly afterwards and caught this on tape. Another Scientologist gives some advice. Let them go to you. Let them go to you. If we respond in anger and lash back, the Scientologist hope will get arrested. That way, they can prove that L. Ron Hubbard was right when he said that anyone who criticizes Scientology is a criminal. You're standing on the road, buddy. Let's go back two days earlier to a different picket. This is Scientologist Dennis Clark, who's going to try to provoke me. Looks innocent, but take a look from another angle. He steps on my foot and jabs me with his elbow. Let's look at it again, slowed down. Dennis Clark checks over his shoulder to see if anyone's looking. He steps on my foot and jabs me. Moments later, he tries the same thing with a second cameraman and gets a bigger reaction. Excuse me. Hey, don't you fucking push me, man. Excuse me, man. You had your elbow right out there. That was nice. We have that from a second angle, too. Excuse me. Hey, don't you fucking push me, man. Excuse me, man. You had your elbow right out there. I was bullied and, and grabbed by Dennis Clark. Left a little scratch on my left hand, or left arm. 
Two days after that, I was again present, this time at the, uh, the press conference at the Lisa McPherson Trust. There was someone lurking in the parking garage. So I went up there with uh, another person following me and uh, got up to the third floor and opened the door, and who did I see but Dennis Clark uh, lurking uh, in the parking garage and spying on the people coming and going there. You doing all right today? He suddenly got up and elbowed me as he went by uh, and went down the stairwell. He decided to turn around and come up and accuse me of harassing him. No, not at all. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my face now. Get, Get it out, out of my face. face. Get it out of my face. Excuse me. Get the fuck Okay, out it's out of my face. Out of your face. Get out of my face and stop harassing me. You got it? You got it? Get out of my face. Want to try that one more time? Just who is Dennis Clark? Well, he is the head of the CCHR, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. That's a Scientology front group set up to attack psychiatry. This human rights leader seems to have a lengthy history of antisocial behavior. In 1986, the author of this book, L. Ron Hubbard, Messiah or Madman, reports that Clark came to his office. When the author wasn't there, Clark pointed to the author's assistant and said, you'll do, and punched him in the face. Let's take a look at a few more of Dennis Clark's greatest hits. Here he is shoving gum on my camera lens. Please excuse me, I need to go by here. You're going by then, buddy. Slapping my camera, going after Jeff. Oh, you want one? Yeah. And when we complain to the police, this is what happens. Officer! He just stuck gum in my lens. And a camera, and I'll take the other two. He just stuck gum in my lens. This is big jerk right here. If we see it, we can do something about it right now. There it is. See the gum? I got it on video because I'm recording right now. The big tall character identified as Dennis Clark jammed me in the ribs with his elbow and knocked the picket sign out of my hand. And then they surrounded me and before I could pick up the picket sign, it was gone. So I reported to the police that they'd stolen my picket sign and uh, the police said that if it was hit the ground, it was abandoned. So, what's happened to Dennis Clark? Well, so far, nothing. Mike Croats filed charges against Clark in the parking structure incident, but mysteriously the paperwork for those charges disappeared inside the Clearwater Police Department. Also mysteriously, shortly afterwards, personal information from that police report was posted anonymously on the internet. They posted my name, age, where I live, and uh, other personal information including former employers. Uh, I think in an obvious attempt to intimidate me uh, regarding these charges that I had uh, been wanting pressed. To this date, no action has been taken against Dennis Clark or any of the Scientologists who have been involved in these incidents. What's really frustrating is when the police blame us for the situation. Remember the Scientologist who had to be restrained? Hi. Will you please not touch the camera? You pushed it in my face, asshole. Uh-huh. Uh, does the phrase, let them come to you, make any sense to you? Do you remember somebody telling you that at the last picket? Well, I went across the street to ask the police to please tell the Scientologists not to touch us or our cameras. Sergeant Quinlan, who's here in the center, told me, I saw the whole thing. You were blocking the sidewalk. It's your fault. Here's another angle. Will you please not touch the camera? You pushed it in my face, asshole. Uh-huh. Uh, does the phrase, let them come to you, make any sense to you? Do you remember somebody telling you that at the last picket? Here I'm gesturing for the police to come over and break this up. Of course, they don't. Uh, the police have become less and less and less willing to protect us and at, at this point I would have to say that um, I really feel that the police show a prejudice against us. I have one more piece of footage I'd like to show you. It relates to these off-duty assignment sheets the Clearwater Police signed to work for Scientology. Their assignment reads quote, security for Scientology members entering and exiting buses on Watterson. Yet here in this footage, shot several blocks away from Watterson, you can see the OSA agent walking his off-duty officer to Scientology's Fort Harrison Hotel 
to monitor Bob Minton. The Clearwater Police Department has become Scientology's police force. This uh, can be celebrated as the year in which the occupation of Clearwater was completed. When, when a person gets a sign knocked out of his hands, it's not abandoned property. When someone swings a hammer at somebody and with the intent to hit him, it's not no harm, no foul. When someone uh, uh, tries to destroy uh, equipment by messing with the lens and cameras, it's not just tit for tat. Do the right thing while you got a chance.